Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we have a very long video. This is my last video of 2022, y'all. We've made it. We've made it to the end of the year. Um, I have been excited for this vlog and also have been dreading it throughout the year. Um, I decided at the beginning of 2022 that the 11 books that I had on my five star predictions for the year, I was going to vlog reading them, my in-depth, like real-time thoughts of what I thought about these books and whether or not they were five stars. So if you want to check out my 2022 five-star prediction video, um, the video will be linked below, but this is what it looks like. I talk about the 11 books that I will hopefully give five stars to in 2022. You go check out that video if you want to know like the summaries and like my before thoughts on reading this. This vlog is going to be uh, my ending my end end thoughts of all of these books. When I first started making this vlog, I planned for me to have two clips of each video, one in the middle, 50% of the way through the book, and then one at the end. Halfway through this video, you will see, I just gave up on the halfway point check-in on all of these books because um, I felt like it was too much and I was being very redundant. So the first half of this video will have two clips for each book and then the later half, I'll just have my wrapped up thoughts. You'll see me again at the end of this video. I'm going to be wrapping up my ending thoughts of these books and um, whether or not they were five stars and possibly ranking them for you. I think it's totally fitting that we're wearing this today while we talk about Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon. <laughs> this is an alien romance book. So this is the romance between Cruelden and Mina. So Mina is a human slave on this, to the planet? or a spaceship or something of the sort. And her job is to clean up this sector of rooms. Normally the rooms are empty and they assign her empty rooms to clean because humans are a very hot commodity in the alien universe. <laughs> and they don't want her to get stolen or misused um, because they're her owner's property, you know? But then one day this gladiator is put into her sector of rooms to clean and he has a bit of a temper on him and he doesn't like that he's alone in this cell in this room locked up. And so he bulldozes the entire room, rips apart everything in it, the mattress, rips the sink out of the wall. And um, Mina has been tasked to go clean up after him. Um, he has these cuffs on him that are like magnetic. And when she presses a button, it like, zoop, it sticks him to the wall. And so she cleans up while he's like stuck to the wall. <laughs> and while she's like cleaning, he's just looking at her. He's not even trying to fight it. like. He's really strong. He's been able to like fight off all of the um, tasers and electrocuting collars or whatever. They've been able to like literally rip them off him. But he doesn't even fight this. He like just is against the wall stuck, just staring at her, <laughs> entranced. Um, and so she gets mad at him. She's like, make sure not to like me make this messy anymore. Like, I don't want to clean up after you again, just being snarky. And so then he makes a me more messes in his room so that she can come and clean them for him. It gets to a point where he won't cooperate with his owners as a gladiator. He won't fight for them unless they give him Mina. That's how it starts. I don't want to say anything else unless you want to read it. Um, I'm 50% of the way through this. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm a huge Ruby Dixon fan. I'm obsessed with her and her writing and her books are just so fun. I love them. And I also love a good uh, swoon worthy hero, like in the sense that all of her heroes totally become mush ball swooniness for the heroine and I am obsessed with it. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of this book is gonna go because I have like six hours left of the audiobook. I just had fun for the first time together if you catch my drift. <laughs> and it was good because um, our hero has a memory loss because apparently he was in stasis for years and his memory of when he was a gladiator before now before he was in stasis he doesn't have that memory so there's like kind of like an amnesia trope in here too because he doesn't remember who he was beforehand and so he knows nothing about women he doesn't know how to do stuff with women at all so he's essentially completely innocent again um if he was i don't know if he was before or not and so mina's kind of like teaching him stuff and it's really it's many days later. I finished Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon like a day or two after that update video, but unfortunately due to my health, I was not feeling well or up to filming. So I, it's been over a week since I've read this book and I gave it five stars. I loved it. <laughs> I think I really love romances and alien romances in general. I know this is a weird specific like subgenre or trope where 
like the hero and the heroine are forced to be together and they're captured by people and then like they end up falling in love with each other but like not in like a gross way i don't know how to describe it but like the two of them were forced to live in this cell together and take care of each other and they fell in love and i personally love that and i love like gladiator barbarian romances if you don't know me i i'm a sucker for it i just read um another alien romance book literally almost similar to this where like the two of them are forced to live in a cell together and take care of each other and it was great <laughs> i'm just a sucker for barbarian gladiator romances i love this and then i also loved the whole i'm not gonna spoil anything in this vlog obviously or i'm going to try to not spoil anything but like the whole reveal at the end about who cruelden actually is um I wasn't really expecting that and I did like it. It was a very pleasant surprise. I personally love this romance a lot and how dedicated the hero was to caring for this woman. Um, even though his captors and everyone were telling him he's a brutal, horrible, gladiator man. And he's like, but that's not how I feel. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I, I am not that kind of person at all. I don't know where you found this person. Why you think I'm that kind of person. I am not that kind of person. And I loved it. He was such a big softy. And at the end with like his character and finding out who he truly is as a person. Oh, I loved it. And the heroine loved it too. It was so sweet. I gave this one five stars. So this was a success in a five star prediction video. Hi guys. Sorry for the bad lighting and the glare. <laughs> it is what it is. I wanted to mention that I am halfway through Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. I'm loving this. <laughs> The fifth book in the Brutal Birthright series between Riona and, oh my god, what is his name? I have really bad memory loss, so like, forgive me please. Is it Raylan? Raylan. I think that's his name. Um, Riona and Raylan. He's just a cute little cowboy. I love the audiobook narrator and his accents that he chooses for like the male um, main character. As someone from Texas, um, I, I personally love country accents. <laughs> so like... I'm a sucker for him. Um, so I've been loving his accents and everything. And I'm really loving Braylon as a character. And I love just the grumpy sunshine dynamic between Riona and Raylan. Like, yes. <laughs> so in this book, like Riona basically has a near-death experience. Like someone's out to kill her. Raylan gets called to be her bodyguard until they find the killer. The scene where she almost gets killed towards the beginning terrifying like it happens in a pool it kind of scared me because my biggest fear in life is like sharks because i had a reoccurring nightmare as a kid about a shark in a pool killing me there was no shark in this pool by the way in the book but like anything to do with like drowning in pools or like someone trying to drown you or kill you in a pool like i immediately think of my reoccurring childhood nightmare and so that's why i'm always scared to go in the deep end of pools even though growing up i was heavily invested in into swim team and uh swim club and all that stuff i still am terrified of the deep end of a pool because of that reoccurring nightmare um i had as a kid because like when you can't touch the bottom i freak the f out <laughs> so i really felt for riona and her fear of going back to the pool after what happened to her i also love all like the family dynamic too riona's family callum and all of her other brothers and sisters even like dante and that family i forget the names of everyone's family but like the mafia aspect in here is very light and i don't know if that's the reason why someone's out to kill her like the reason has not been revealed yet, um, but she is a lawyer, so maybe that might have something to do with it, who knows. There's this one scene that I just read, that I just left off on, and um, it was so good. One of the hottest scenes I've ever read. <laughs> so Riona and Raylan decide to go horseback riding. They end up swimming. <laughs> That scene, one of the hottest scenes I have ever read about ever. <laughs> this book is really great so far. It's gonna probably be five stars. I'm ready to read the rest of it. I uh, just know that probably the rest of this book is gonna deal with someone coming to kill Riona. They're trying to find the killer um, and um, Raylan protecting her. I have finished Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. I'm actually in the middle of the next book right now currently. And oh my gosh, the end of Broken Vow was so good. I kind of saw like the villain coming. I don't really like like mysteries and romance books because like 
I'm able to find out who it is or what happened really quickly in my brain. And like, because I think about every single possible scenario because I'm an overthinker. <laughs> I'm a catastrophizer, as my therapist would say. <laughs> so I think about every single possibility. So I did have the possibility of who the villain would be when reading this, but that's okay. I loved Raylan and Riona. They were so beautiful. I loved the grumpy sunshine aspect in here and how Riona's walls were silly crumbling for Raylan and how freaking sweet Raylan is. Like the cowboy hero, yes. <laughs> There's another scene where the heroine is almost about to get unalive by somebody and she's like running through a field and he and Raylan ends up helping her and saving her from this man. And I was like, dang, dang. And then the scene after that, dang. Dang, dang, dang. <laughs> I kind of liked how this book kind of had some stuff to do with the mafia, but kind of like didn't. It was like a little bit more taken aback than book two, Stolen Air, and this, uh, the one I'm currently reading, Heavy Crown, are. Um, like, I kind of like how the mafia like is kind of like dialed back a little bit in some of these books because I feel like it's just refreshing in that way. All I kind of have to say is I loved this. I love Raylan. I love Riona. I definitely thought that this would be a five star and it is. I loved it so much. And I really recommend if you're wanting to read this one to read it in order because I feel like you got to get to know Riona a little bit before and Raylan because you meet Raylan in the book before this one. Um, but I loved this and I loved this Grumpy Sunshine duo. I wish we got to see them in the one I'm currently reading so far. They have not been present whatsoever. So we'll see if they pop up later on. And also there's like a romance going on that I wish was its own book because it would be freaking amazing. I don't know if it is, I don't think it is, but Raylan has a sister, her name's Bo. She has been best friends with, I think his name is Duke, with this boy named Duke since they were little. In the book, they have like this, fighting going on between the two of them because like Duke has like admitted his feelings to Bo but she doesn't want to ruin their relationship and so there's jealousy going on between the two of them because Duke's trying to make her jealous by dancing with other girls at this party and she like gets so angry and then at the end the ending the last chapter with them was like so amazing I loved it I wish there was more though because I want a book about them like that would be amazing Sophie Lark please write that I want that I love friends to lovers and so like I would love it. Anyway, I need to take a break, go eat something because like I am hyper right now from talking about that book because it was so good. So yeah, I gave this book five stars. I loved it. So stinking much. Hello, I am halfway through The Quarry Master by Amanda Milo. I think this is such a good read so far, but I will say I wish, wish, wish that I read the other books in the series before this one because people are saying, oh, you can read it as a standalone. However, I can tell that these couples that people are mentioning are like couples of from previous books and I've only read book one and book five and the couple from book five aren't in this book at all, but I am enjoying it. I just feel like I could love it way more if I knew about these couples beforehand. Like I know that there's a book called Beth's, Beth's Stable that's in this series and it's before this one. And like Beth shows up and has all of her men and I'm like, dang, I should have read that book beforehand so I know about Beth and everything, but it's fine, it's fine. I love these two characters though. So on this one planet, they're trying to make this kind of like sanctuary and community for human women who have been illegally abducted from earth and so bash is this alien he's the guy on the cover um he's kind of like the overseer uh, overseer of all the work being done and the construction and everything and he's in charge of the human women who are helping build this town he's very grumpy <laughs> He does not like how human women um, are very fragile and tend to take a lot of breaks while working and chat incessantly. And he's so sick of it. And so a new woman comes, a new group of women come, and with the group of women comes Isla. And she's a very hard worker. She's working harder than any of the other women and not complaining at all. And Bash is very interested and very intrigued by her by this and finds it very admirable. He realizes she's working twice as hard as the other women and she also is an amputee. Like she doesn't have, I believe here down, she doesn't have her arm. And she is so funny. She makes jokes about herself um, because her arm is missing. Like she makes self deprecating jokes. It's like one of those things where people who are disabled are like, it's okay to make, it's okay for me to make jokes about me and my disability. It's the way I cope. <laughs> So I felt her with that. But their banter in here is hilarious. Bash can't help himself and wants to be around her all the time, even though he's very grumpy about it and doesn't 
like other human women but he is so into Isla and wants to be around her all of the time and does not care that she just chatters and chatters and chatters and chatters all day long like he'll just listen to her all day every day <laughs> this so far is just about the two of them talking and getting to know each other and working on this quarry and we'll see what happens but Bash and her are like <laughs> so entertaining to read about. I just can't wait for Bash to become a complete and utter softie for this woman. Like that's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I love about grumpy sunshine romances is when the grump becomes a total puddle for his woman. Like I am so looking forward to that. I finished The Koi Master by Amanda Milo and it's been like a week since I finished it. I apologize. I have been dealing with medical stuff as well as moving. I'm currently in my college apartment for the next three months. I finished The Quarry Master and I really enjoyed this, but I don't know if it's five stars, which is so upsetting. I honestly think it's because I did not read the other books in the series before this one. And I think just what I need to do and hopefully my rating will change. I think I'm gonna give this 4.5 stars because it's not my one of my all time favorite books, especially when it comes to alien romances. It's not my one, one of my favorite alien romance books. I feel like I'm missing a lot with the alien culture and alien types because there's like a bunch of different types of aliens discussed in this book and I'm like, I'm a little confused. That's one thing I do remember from book one when I read it because I've only read book one and book five in this series. Um, and the couple from book five don't even appear in this book at all. Um, so book one, I was very confused reading that book. So that's why I gave it like a three star rating. Um, and that's one of like the first alien romances I ever read besides Ruby Dixon books. And I was very confused and I didn't feel like the aliens were described all that much and the world building was not described to a degree that I feel comfortable in, like that I love, you know, like Ruby Dixon, simple to the point, talks about Sukui males, what they do, what they don't do, like how they interact with people and everything. And like the aliens in these books, I feel like there's so many of them, so many different ones. Like it's hard for me to recollect everything, especially because of my brain specifically. So it may be a me issue and not like a book issue, obviously. But yeah, I'm just having a hard time grasping the whole, like, like the alien part in here. And also I felt like kind of left out, like I had FOMO when it came to side characters in here because I feel like they had their own story that I just didn't know about. And that's my bad, I guess. But I feel like I need to go just read the other books in the series and then reread this one. And then hopefully my reading will change. But I really did like love the couple in here. The couple in here is what got me, of course. The Grumpy Sunshine aspect is amazing. I loved it. I love when he brought her to his parents' house. Like, that was so cute. That was so cute. I thought it was also really funny how willing the heroine was to being kidnapped by him. She's like, I'm waiting for you to kidnap me. Come on. And when he finally does, she's like, yes. And he's like baffled. He's like, you are a strange woman. Why would you want to be kidnapped by me? <laughs> so he like chains her to his bed. That whole scene when he chains her to the bed. <sighs> yes. So that's all that I really have to say. Unfortunately, it's not that much. I finished this book like a week ago and so I don't really have anything else that I remember, honestly. Um, but I did really enjoy this. But unfortunately, it's not a five star from me. Um, but hopefully on my reread, it will be. <laughs> I am halfway through The Fake King's Dream by Jamie Slosser and I'm enjoying it. I will say though, I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would. I think it's because the couple's already together. Like they're already together at this point. Sometimes when that happens in romances, I love it because there's still outside tension and things that are tearing the couple apart or are getting in between them. And that's not really happening in here. I don't think I'm really loving this one as much as the first one. I don't know if that means it'll get a lower rating, but um, I'm just saying I'm not loving it as much, but I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I am flying through this. I think the amnesia aspect in here, there's an amnesia aspect. The hero saves the girl from Earth, like brings her to his um, fantasy realm. She kind of has amnesia when she wakes up and she doesn't remember who she is, what happens and all that. And um, she then very quickly remembers everything. And I'm like, why Why was the amnesia even included? Like, I feel like that wasn't necessary. Um, but I do love the hero in here. I think it's very quirky and nice and fun and sweet. 
um, to the heroine and he gets a lot of earth references wrong, which is really funny. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but it was very interesting. The uh, things that were revealed about the heroine's past and like where she comes from, um, I was not expecting that. So that was a fun surprise. I also love Kieran and Quinn popping up who are the characters from book one, they're in here. And I love just seeing them and hearing their banter and everything. So I really love seeing old characters like pop up in later books in the series. So that's all I really have to say at this halfway point um, because I feel like anything else could be like spoilery, but I am enjoying it. But right now it's on the track to a four star and not a five star. Are, unfortunately but that's okay i'm still enjoying my time reading this i have finished the vikings dream by jamie slosser schlosser dang i can't ever say her name right i'm a little disappointed i don't know if it's the book itself or the general mood i've been in this past couple days and weeks but this book took me over a week to finish like i think even almost two weeks to finish and like that does not happen for me i finish books like this like i never read a book for more than like four days. It's different if it's not an ebook than an audiobook. Audiobook I'll finish in like a day or two, but ebooks it takes me, if it takes me more than five days to finish an ebook, that's when I know like I'm not enjoying it as much as I should be. Um, so I've been reading this ebook for almost two weeks and I finally finished it last night and it was not as good as I thought it was going to be, unfortunately. I did not love it as much as book one um, or even the novella, the prequel novella, but I really wanna read the rest of the series, especially book four, because I know that book four is a fan favorite as well. This unfortunately is not a five star for me. I was kind of bored throughout the most of this. I feel like that's why I never wanted to pick it up. The characters basically get together like 25% of the way through the book and the rest of the book is like them trying to complete this one task with a bunch of things coming in and out of the story and I was just bored like I was like the couple's already together the couple's already solidified their relationship like what what are all these pages left for like I'm a very big character driven reader so I do love romance books where the couple is together for the majority of the book I love reading books like that but there has to be other things on top of that that make it interesting and even like internal conflict or tension between the characters themselves even though they are together for me to want to read the book more i literally felt like there was no tension between these two characters after they got together they're like great we're perfect we're in love now after knowing each other for like three days um even though they're faded mates like this is the type of faded mate romance that i don't necessarily prefer where they go head on head in in love day one not knowing each other at all <laughs> like I get your fading mates, but you also don't know each other. So I think I'm either gonna give this book a 3.5 or a three star because I did enjoy the world. I loved the side characters. I loved the writing overall. It's just like the story in here was not that entertaining to me. I was unfortunately very bored by it, um, but I will continue on with the rest of the series. And that's all I really have left to say. There's not much I even remember about this book because when things are not entertaining to me and boring to me, I don't remember them. So I don't remember a lot from this book because I simply did not want to remember it. I didn't see the points. Unfortunately, this is not a five star read for this video, which I'm very sad about, but um, I have hope for the rest of the series, especially book four. <laughs> I finally finished Gaslight Hades by Grace Draven. I think maybe for some of these clips, I might not do a midway check-in just because this video is probably gonna be very long. And books like this one was only 100 pages. I had nothing to update you on halfway through the book. So Gaslight Hades, this one is my first steampunk book that I've ever read. And I put this book on this five star prediction list because I am in love with Grace Draven. Um, I love her books. I love her writing. And so I was like, anything by Grace Draven is going to be like five stars for me. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for this one. And I'm so sad. This is the romance between Lenore and Nathaniel. And it's actually a second chance romance. So in this steampunk setting. So if you don't know, steampunk is basically kind of like a historical set book, like kind of like a historical romance set book but there's a bunch of machinery and mechanics that go past that time period kind of i don't really know how to describe it you can look it up if that sounds confusing to you basically um lenore and nathaniel were together when they were younger but nathaniel died five years ago and lenore's father just passed recently she's at her father's gravesite and they're i think a bone keeper who is in charge of making sure none of the graves in a graveyard gets disturbed a bone keeper comes to like 
talk to Lenore for a second or like to tell her that her father's grave will not be disturbed. And she finds this bone keeper very familiar. And this bone keeper kind of reminds her of her lost love she lost five years ago. And it might be Nathaniel. Nathaniel might have been put up as an experiment to this gross dude to put souls from people dying into another dying body and to reanimate the body to look kind of like the guy you see on the cover, like white hair, white skin, kind of like ghost looking. And so um, it is Nathaniel's job, the new Nathaniel, to uh, protect Lenore and to hopefully fall in love with him again. Um, this was okay. It was not my favorite thing. It was only 108, 100, no, 105 pages. And I feel like their relationship just wasn't enough for me because a lot of it was second chance. And it was more so of a telling instead of a showing when it came to the romance between the two of them. The parts when they were like together were not a lot. And so I didn't really, I didn't really love all that much of it. I loved Grace Rubin's writing and her world building was really cool. I, I, I will admit I was a little bit confused by this world building because it was my first steampunk romance. It's just a little confusing to me overall. Um, like literally they're in ships that fly instead of go on the sea. And so that was very cool, but it was a little confusing just in general. I am interested to read the other book in this series. Whenever it comes out, there is no set date, but it's about one of the other bone keepers. I think there's six bone keepers and each book is going to be about them finding a romance, I guess. So this was just okay. I don't really know what else to say. I liked Lenore and Nathaniel, but I felt like I was missing a lot because I didn't read about them before Nathaniel died the first time. Um, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars. I have finished Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. I can't find my copy for the life of me. I'm in between like moving places and um, it's shoved somewhere in a shelf or a box or something. I don't know where it is. But man, this book surprised me. I don't know why it did because I absolutely love The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. This one blew my mind, okay? I've already read book two. I was so sucked into this series. I need to read book two. I'm gonna start book three soon. It is so good. This series is so underhyped. I don't know why more people haven't read it. It's probably honestly because of the cover. It looks a little bizarre, okay? I'm not gonna lie, that was a little bit of a deterrent for me, but now I don't care. Like, give me these books. They are so stinking good. This one is a fantasy romance, obviously, and it's dealing with fake mates and royalty and shifters and fantasy romance stuff and it is just so epic it is so good like this fantasy romance perfectly blends like the correct amount of fantasy with romance like it is stunning our two main characters in here are rain and eliseta eliseta is a human woman and she just thinks she's a normal human woman living with her adoptive parents in like the normal human realm and Rain, who is a Terran soul, which Terra, it's a little, little, little strange what Terrans are. Terrans are these giant cat creatures that can fly. And so Terran, so Rain, right? Sorry, Rain is the last Terran soul, which is a Terran shifter, the last Terran shifter to exist. So he's a in his humanoid form and he can shift, or his fey form, and he can shift into his Terran form too. So he can turn into like a flying cat. <laughs> which is a little bizarre to me. I honestly just picture him as like Reese with wings and I forget about the flying cat part. <laughs> so you can do that too if that if that helps you. But yeah, one day he's flying over like the human realm where Eliseta is and he ends up scenting his mate and he goes absolutely like feral crazy uh, to find her. And he ends up finding her, claiming her as his, saying you're mine, you're my mate. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like a human woman and in this world, the way that fated mates are set up is like your fated mate is your equal in every way. Equal in personality wise, but also in strength. She's like, this makes no sense. I'm a normal human woman. You are the most powerful Terran soul, Fae, to ever exist. Like, this makes no sense. This book is about him courting Eliseta and trying to convince her to be his. Right from the get-go, he is absolutely smitten and is like, you're mine. I'm yours. I will do anything and everything for you. Talk about a worshiping hero. Rain is a worshiping hero. This whole series is about Eliseta discovering who she is in this fantasy realm, but also falling in love with Rain. And it is 
beautiful. I don't really want to say anything else. There is trickery in here for attempted essay, not by the hero, so just be aware of that. This series is epic. Like you, you have to read it. If you love fantasy romance, you have to read C.L. Wilson. I say start with The Winter King and then read these books because like so good. I'm so excited to continue on with this series. And that's all I'm really going to say about this. I freaking love this. It didn't get a full five stars for me. It got a 4.5 um, just because there were some things or some places in the book where it was a little bit laggy to me. And I wasn't all that interested. I was zoning out. And I feel like five star books don't have me zone out, if that makes sense. But it was still freaking amazing. I totally recommend the series. I have also gave book two 4.5 stars. These books are also really good with how they end them because it's not like an SJM book where the book like ends on a complete cliffhanger that has you devastated and you have to wait a year to resolve it. Like the book ends in a resolution, both of the books that I've read in the series ends in a resolution, but there is still more plot that needs to be solved in the next book or needs to be, you know, like it doesn't devastate you like an SJM ending would, um, which is good for my heart and soul, okay? <laughs> I really loved this one. And C.L. Wilson is becoming one of my favorite fantasy romance authors of all time. I freaking, freaking loved this book. Hi everyone, I finished Art and Soul by Brittany Cherry. I finished it last night. I haven't cried in a while from a book. I was just listening to this book, playing like a game on my iPad, just staring, tears like falling off the sides of my face because I'm laying down like, <sighs> Brittany Cherry can just, really pull at your heartstrings, okay? She is a mastermind with stuff like that. And I didn't think this book specifically would do that, but it totally did. I was not expecting that. So this one is actually, I feel like, more geared towards new adult, I don't want to say YA, but maybe YA range. Um, There is no steam, no spice. It's fairly innocent between the two main characters, but the heroine is dealing with, well, both of them are dealing with very he heavy topics. So maybe it's more new adult range. Um, but if you're not wanting to read like anything with spies, you know, this is one you could pick up. It is so good, but um, it is the romance between a 16 and a 17 year old. But again, there's nothing going on between the two of them in that department. So I was perfectly fine reading about a 16 and 17 year old in a romance book. So this is the romance between Aria and Levi. So Levi is from Alabama and he moves somewhere. I don't remember where, but he moves somewhere, I believe, to the Midwest. And he ends up going to a new school, and there he meets Aria, who's kind of known as the Invisible Girl. They are neighbors also now, and they are very much intrigued by each other when they first meet each other. Aria's the kind of like glossed over, kind of like rocker chick looking girl. You can see on the picture, she has like half of her head shaved. Um, She wears like eye dark eyeliner, makeup. She is an artist. She loves art. And Levi is more of the country boy and he loves music and he plays the violin. Arya is very much invisible in her school until the news gets out that she is pregnant. She got pregnant by a guy you read about in the book, it's not Levi. And so suddenly she is getting heavily bullied by some mean girls struggling with being a teenager who is pregnant. It is just so good. Levi is a sweetheart and would do anything for her. The title is Art and Soul because the two of them are also paired up uh, to do a project together. Arya's in an art class and Levi's in a music class and the two classes combine to do a end of the year project together. So she's the art and he is the soul and they're put together as Art and Soul. He even nicknames her Art. Um, it's really cute um, but there are a lot of deep topics mentioned in this book. Levi is going through some things with his father. Um, he is dealing with a terminal illness and Levi is trying to deal with that while his dad is pushing him away and Levi has no idea why and Arya is obviously dealing with the fact that she is a teenager and pregnant and dealing with the drama that is the baby daddy dealing with bullies at school and dealing with her family who's kind of falling apart since she has revealed her situation but in the end it was so worth it like all their struggles, all the strife that they went to went through <laughs> was so incredibly worth it. This was a sweet yet emotional romance. It was really great. And that's all I really want to leave you with. I know these clips for this video keep getting shorter and shorter, but I want to leave you with a little bit of mystery with these books because they are really good. I'm going to be giving this book 4.5 out of 5 stars just because it didn't have the full 5 star for me. I don't know. I read a book and then I immediately know if it's 5 stars or not. And this one, I didn't get that feeling. 
but I still loved it. It was amazing. I don't find any fault in it. So um, Brittany Cherry is an amazing writer and she tells stories in a way that is just beautiful. This romance was beautiful even though it is geared more towards a younger age range. Um, you can still see these two as total soulmates as, as 16 and 17 years old. Like Brittany can do that. I loved the discussion of art and um, soul music in here. It was great. It was beautiful. I loved it. Brittany Cherry can do no wrong. This book was fantastic. <laughs> Hi everyone. I look a little grandma-y <laughs> right now, but um, this is what we're working with. I'm currently getting ready to film and this is the time I have to talk to you about uh, what I thought of the Lady of Burke's Great Banner by Catherine Moon. <laughs> so I'm going to be uh, getting ready uh, for that video. I already have my base on, my foundation and concealer, and um, that's about it. I'm going to do everything else might not do everything for y'all on camera um because we'll see how long it takes for me to film this clip to talk about all my feelings and yeah sorry i don't know why i just said all that but it's been actually a little bit since i filmed something so i'm feeling a little bit a little bit camera awkward that happens sometimes for y'all where y'all like haven't filmed in a bit so you're kind of like camera shy or camera awkward so um, yeah anyway let's talk about a lady of Burke's grave manner by Catherine moon while i do that i'm gonna be doing my bronzer if you're like curious this is the bronzer i use i really love nyx products i feel like they work really well for me um i use their jelly primer i love it i swear by it anyway um let's talk about this monster romance so this is my first time reading Catherine moon and i know she writes a lot of omega verse monster romance and so I was very excited to read one of her books and I was hoping it's gonna be a five star because so many of my friends love this book and this book series and also specifically Catherine Moon. And I was like, okay, great. I love monster romances. Like those are my bread and butter. Give them all to me. Wow, I look like I have dirt on my face instead of bronzer. Give me a second. <laughs> I was actually really looking forward to this but I'm also been dreading it because it's a why choose romance, which is like, a romance where there is one girl who has multiple men. That is the new term we're using, by the way, just so you know. The other term um, I don't think is okay to say anymore, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, don't like those books. I just don't. I prefer Polly where everyone's together. I don't prefer um, like why choose where there's one girl and so many men and the men aren't together. They just all want her. I don't know why. That is just so unrealistic to me compared when I read freaking like vampire books and monster romances. The monster romance isn't the unrealistic part that takes me out of the story. It's the why choose multiple men wanting one woman and them not being jealous of each other or um, them not getting with other women. Like it just, it's so unrealistic. To me. Like, I don't know why my brain is just like, I don't like this. I don't. Um, I much prefer Polly when everyone can be together and happy. So you probably won't ever see one of those on my channel, like the rec videos, because I have yet to read a five star. So spoiler alert, this was not a five star for me. This was a four star. I enjoyed it. It was okay. It was good. I liked it. I have not been thinking about it at all since I read it. I read this a week ago, which is upsetting because I wanted to. But again, I knew that this was a subgenre. Is, is, are white shoes as subgenres? Anyway, I know this was a like a book that I just have the potential not to be a five star or it could be amazing. Like that's why I put on my five star prediction because I love monster romances and this is one of the most iconic monster romances out there currently. And so I was like, so hoping that I would like this, but um, like I liked it, it was fine. I just like, I found myself skimming so much of this book. I like, I love steam. Okay, I get it. But this was honestly just too much for me to a point where I just didn't care anymore. Like it was fun, it was hot, you know? But like, man, I got so bored. I got bored. It wasn't until the end chunk, like the last like 15% or 20% where like an occurrence happens. And you know what? No, no, no like bow chicka bow wow happens for like the rest of the book. And I was like, this is the best part to me. Like, this is the best part. Like, you're not focusing on all that stuff. You're focusing on their characters and them caring for each other and loving each other, trying to save each other from a certain thing. Like, that's what I wanted. And we only got that in the last, like, 15, 20%. All the other time was them, like, bow chicka bow wow. Like, you know? And, like, 
I get it. People only want to read books because of that. I, I want to read books. I know what kind of books I want to read. When I know that I want to read the type of book, I specifically pick up like a short steamy hot novella by Jessica Kane or something because I know what I'm getting myself into. And I've rated some of those five stars because that's what I signed up for. This was a 400 plus book and I feel like we didn't get enough character development. Now I wanted to lower my rating, honestly, from a four. Now that I'm talking about it. <laughs> Sorry. Um. I'd love to know your opinion on this book, please, in the comments. I also just didn't like some of the characters. I didn't like the Amon guy, the Egypt Sphinx dude. Like, I didn't care about him. I loved Booker. Like, I wish you would just been with Booker or Ezra. Like, I love Booker and Ezra. No, no, no. You know what? I liked all the men except for Amon. I didn't, I didn't care about him. I think my favorite love interest in here, one of the guys, was Booker. I loved Booker. I loved him. <laughs> I loved the quiet, stoic, broody, heroes. I think he's like a literal marble person and like I loved him. I loved him and how he was with Esther. Like I loved that. Like I just wish like there was less men maybe. I don't know what I would have changed about this book. Honestly maybe just like had you know you know what I wanted? I wanted each hero besides Eamon because I don't care about him. Um, each of so the four guys, or technically five if you count, um, the Dr. Doctor Jekyll, Mr. Hyde character, and I forget their names. Um, anyway, I like, I want, I want each, there'd be like four books in the series, and each book in the series is about a man, one of the guys getting with a different girl. So we could have had a whole book about that one guy instead of all guys in one book. I just didn't care that they all wanted Esther. And like they were perfectly willing to share her with each other and like that's just not like I wanted them to also get together so my favorite scene was the scene with the vampire and Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde and Esther all three of them together having fun with all three of them because the guys were together and I'm like give me more of this. There's only one scene and it was barely a scene. Ugh. Like ugh. Anyway I'm like ranting now. <laughs> Sorry, um, but I think I'm gonna be done talking about this book. It was not five stars and I'm a little bit disappointed, but you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. And I forgot to mention what is even in my hair. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, these are my heatless curls that I wear <laughs> at night and I don't take them out until like right before I film. It's chaotic. This, this clip is chaotic. Anyway, I read A Lady Brooks Grave Manor. It was okay. I've read better monster romances. <laughs> I have finished Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleypas and I definitely have thoughts on this. Um, I've gotten a few DMs from my friends saying like, oh my gosh, I love this. And then I've read other reviews where my friends did not care for this book. I even got a text from like Rachel. She's like, I feel like everyone either loves this book or hates this book. I haven't seen anybody in between. I guess I'm that one person who's in between. I gave this book four stars. This one is about Merit and Kier and it is their romance and it's very insta-lovey. And I feel like that's where a lot of people strayed in their loving and hating or not liking this book. A few of my friends didn't like this book because of the insta-love aspect in here, which is not something like, I, di I didn't not like that. Like that was fine for me. It was something I loved, but like I didn't hate it because of that. I really loved like their relationship in general. I thought that was really sweet. I can't, I'm, I'm having a really hard time articulating my thoughts on this book, honestly. I liked it. I did not think this was epic. Like some of my other friends, like, I just, I didn't. I read better books in this series, honestly. Book three, nothing can beat book three for me, Devil in Spring. Oh no, nothing can beat that book. And so this one was just like, eh, it's okay. Like it was good, but yeah, I really liked their romance and how they were like so into each other. And then I really liked the amnesia trope. I love a good amnesia trope. So I really liked that in here. And I did like the part with Sebastian. Is that his name, right? Sebastian. Um, yeah, because Sebastian and Evie and their whole plot line in here. I really liked that. I think one of the things that I just didn't care for is like there was a lot going on in this book, like a lot. Um, you have like the romance between the two of them, she owning this shipping company, him getting amnesia, there's this whole mystery with his parentage, someone's trying to kill him, and like it's a lot. I feel like it was too much at points. I will say the scene when he gets his memory back is iconic. I will say that. I really loved that. Um, but other than that, I 
I have nothing else to really say about this. And I feel really bad. This first book where my thoughts are not articulating, like my words are not articulating, my brain is not working for this book. Like my memory, my memory problems are really, really, really coming in strong with this book. And I apologize. That's what happens with my illness. So um, I can't remember like anything about this. And I apologize, but um, I gave this four stars and I liked it. I loved the caretaking scenes in here. I do remember that. They're caretaking scenes and I love the pop in of other books, a part of the Wallflower series and the Ravenel series, like them just popping up in here. I really liked that part of the book and that's all I can remember. And I apologize. <laughs> The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. <laughs> this one, wow. I read The Doctor earlier this year to kind of like prepare for this one um, because I knew I was going to read it and Doctor is technically book one in this series and both of these are so incredibly hot. <laughs> I mean, I liked this one. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. It's not a five star read, unfortunately. There were just some things I didn't really care for. I'm always gonna be a reader. I think we talked about this in the Lady of Rook's Grave Manor clip that like, I like steam in my books, but not like mm. the majority of it, if that makes sense. It was, I feel like a lot in this book. And just like a Lady of Rook's Grave Manor, I kept wanting to just like skip over some of the scenes because I felt like it was like too much for me. Like I just, I didn't really care. Don't get me wrong. I love a good hot time in my romances, but it gets to a point where it's happening so often in some of these romances that I get bored. I did like their relationship. I love how he has been like pining after this woman for years. The reaction to his parents was very realistic. The music part was interesting. Sometimes I didn't care. Sometimes I did. Like it wasn't a plot line that I was like, chopping at the bit to read about. So overall, I liked this one. Um, there's nothing, oh my goodness, hi. It's this, he wants this, hello, here. I definitely want to read more in this series. There's just nothing much else that I can talk about with this one. It's just an age gap romance where the heroine is older and her pool boy and her get together and she's a music manager and hears him sing one night and is totally smitten for his voice and then she falls for him and they have some good old time together her ex-husband is a piece of work that's for freaking sure also the conflict in here was a little bit like really when he could have just like said i don't want to spoil anything but he could have just said something and that would have just avoided the conflict whatsoever this was like a four star read i read this about like two weeks ago and i don't really remember all that much so it's more of like a 3.5 now because the less I'm able to remember about a book, like the less memorable it is to me. And so I don't think of it like highly, highly. Don't get me wrong. I really enjoy my time reading this and I definitely want to read more of Nikki Sloan's books. Mm -hmm. This is my third book I've read from her so far and I do like her writing. It's just like sometimes it's just too much for me. I just, I need, I think I need more like emotional conversations instead of a lot of what happened in this book was they would have an emotional conversation and then it would lead to screwing. And I'm like, I I don't like that, you know? Sometimes I do, sometimes I do. But I felt like almost every single time they had like an important conversation, they would do stuff afterward. And I'm like, that's not how I feel. I don't know from personal experience, but I feel like that's not like realistic. I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong from someone who's never been in a relationship before. Excuse the dog whining, he just wants one thing. <laughs> it's like giving a baby his passy, honestly. <laughs> tell me what you loved about this book in the comment section down below, please. If you give this five stars, please let me know. I'd love to chat about it. But yeah, I'm gonna go read the last book for this vlog now. I read my last book for this vlog. From Luke Off With Love by Mariana Zapata. I also read this book all in one day, okay? Be very proud of me. <laughs> I read this behemoth of a book all in one day and I'm very proud of myself. I got it on audio, so I wasn't physically reading this, but I sat down yesterday and was doing so many things in my room, cleaning my room, addressing some things, doing some orders. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna knock this all out. So I sped it up to like almost three, point, three times speed and listen to this. Um, I will say it was an enjoyable read it will not be five stars for me. Maybe I set my expectations a little bit too high. You know what? No, I didn't, okay? So there were things that I really did like about this book. Let's start off with there. I really loved the figure skating aspect of this book, the um, partnership between Ivan and um, Jasmine. I really loved that. And just the caretaking part in here, how Ivan was really, is it Ivan? Ivan, Ivan, Ivan. I'm trying to remember what the audiobook narrator said. I think it's Ivan. 
I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna say Lukov because <laughs> I don't want to mispronounce his name. Anyway, um, Lukov in here was really caring towards Jasmine at the end of this freaking book. The figure skating part in here was great. I loved it. Now, um, the beginning part of this book, I didn't really like. <laughs> I think Mariana Zapata's humor is different than my own. I don't like any jokes whatsoever. N none at all involving weight. None. Like, no. Like, that is a big no, no, X, no for me. I don't care, like, what you think about it. It will also always, it will always be a big no, no from me. And there were so many weight jokes in here that I just wanted to close the book. Like, I, I hated it. And then his whole nickname for her is Meatball. And I'm like, why would you choose that? Like, I don't understand. I hated that. And it just, ugh. there's specifically one where I was just like, are you joking? This is in the book. Let me pull it up. Okay, so I'm on page 68, by the way. So Jasmine's family is like telling her like, oh, Lukov's not that bad of a guy. Like, he's not that mean. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's always been very nice to me, blah, blah, blah. She's sitting around her family at the dinner table. And she's like, you don't understand the things, or I've heard the things that he has said to me, like, have been so rude. And they're like, okay, well, what are those things? She said, he told me once that I needed to lose weight before my blades gave out on me. Okay, and then the kicker is her whole family erupts in laughter and is like, that's hilarious. You're being a drama queen. That's such a funny joke. And I'm like, excuse me? No, I hate that. I, I hate that. I can't believe, <sighs> I can't believe that's in this book or in any book like that. I don't like jokes like that. Like that's not funny to me. Jasmine's weight, I feel like is made fun of way too much in this book, specifically by the hero, which is just like, ridiculous to me if he has been pining for her for this whole time why are you making jabs at her appearance and like her weight i don't understand so that was immediately docked star for me was um the discussion and the jokes around weight in here because it's a it's a probably a me thing but i don't enjoy reading about that at all and again the whole meatball thing i was like you choose that to be her nickname when you're also making fun of her weight. So guess what that sounds like to her? Anyway, um, so I can see why she did not like him is because he was making fun of her weight constantly and just like jabbing at her. And I, I wouldn't have fallen for this guy. Like I felt like the guy at the beginning who was making fun of her is completely different than the guy at the end of the book that I loved. And so it was really hard for me to connect the two beginning the end of the book like it's really hard for me to connect the two Ivans that we saw didn't love this as much as I thought it's very disappointing I love the figure skating part but like the enemies part at the beginning of this book was not it for me it it was not it I did not care for it this is me jumping in really fast with this clip I totally forgot to mention this I was looking at my notes after I filmed the clip from Luca would love the clip for it and like I forgot to mention one of the other big kickers that I was like what are you what is he's 30 years old she's 20 mm -hmm. they're, they're old or they're acting like they're 18 whether they treat each other the way that they act around each other like why couldn't have mariana zapata just made them younger because that's what the way they act they act like they're 18 years old the way that they kick each other under the table and like pinchy pinch each other during like like uh the interview thing i was like y'all are acting like children <laughs> I thought you were 30, my dude. So I definitely did not see why Mariana Zapata made these two older than uh, the age of 18, or at least 21. Like, cause they acted under the age of 21. Like if Mariana Zapata did not tell you what ages they were, I would have fully believed that they were under the age of 20 or 21 at the oldest. Cause like, that's the way they acted. I'm thinking I'm gonna give this book a 3.5 out of five stars. It just isn't a full four star for me. So I think a 3.5 is a great rating to give this one. Okay, so we're gonna be wrapping up this video. I'm gonna be going over all of the books really fast and my rating and how they ranked with each other. So I had 11 books that were on this list that I thought could be 
five star reads for me. Out of those 11, only two of them were full five star reads from me. And those ones were Broken Vow by Sophie Lark and Bad Guy by Ruby Dixon, which I can full heartedly agree with. I absolutely adore both of those books and I am very happy that I read those in 2022. I also have two that almost made the five star. I have two 4.5 star books. First we have The Quarry Master by Amanda Milo, A Lord of the Fading Lands by C.O. Wilson, which is a book I have been contemplating moving up to five stars. I think I'm going to be rereading it sometime soon in 2023 and then we will see how that ranks. But both of these books were phenomenal. They just did not give me the same five star feeling as the other two that I've mentioned. I then have three four star books, ones that did not make it fully to five stars. First is Art and Soul by Brittany Cherry, a very enjoyable read. We also have The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan, which was very entertaining. And then lastly, we have Devil in Disguise by uh, Lisa Kleypas. These were all very enjoyable reads. I really did enjoy my time reading them. They just were not all time favorites for me, which is what I deem five stars in my brain. I also have three books that were 3.5 star ratings for me. I just mentioned from Luke off with love and you know my reasons for that. A Lady of Brooks Grape Manor was a little bit disappointing for me. I'm so sad I did not give this book a higher rating and the same goes for Gaslight Hades by Grace Draven. And lastly the book that's probably my least favorite in this video that I did for this video was The Fake King's Dream by Jamie Schlosser which I gave three stars to. It's just so disappointing because I really did enjoy the prequel novella as well as book number one in this series. This one was just a very mediocre compared to the two. Maybe I would think differently if I read this one first, but I've read those other two and I gave both of them five stars. And so I was a little sad and disappointed this one left me the way that it did. So I am now left with whether or not this video was worth it. Was it worth filming and updating all of my thoughts on these books? And I don't have an answer for that question. Um, I would have read probably these books regardless on whether or not they were in this video, like in this challenge I had for myself. I might have not read some of these books in 2022 because I had a deadline to read them by, but I would have read all of them at some point regardless, maybe not last year, as I said before. Maybe I would have enjoyed them also more if I read them at a different time in my life or um, later on in a couple of years or something. I don't know. Um, you never know. The world is a big question mark. I don't think I'm going to be doing another one of these videos just because it was very stressful for me and this took me a long time to do. But if you feel like doing a video like this, I really encourage you to do it because it was fun at certain points and it really pushed me to read books that I would not have read this year. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if any of these were five star reads for you as well. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a rose emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.